Hallo! After making my previous video about looking inside the identifier bank card reader, I wanted to use the LCD display in my own projects. To analyze the display without destroying it, I first needed to make it more accessible. I used a piece of flat cable that matched the size of the LCD connection. I soldered the individual wires to the device. On the other end of the cable, I connected a strip of header pins, then I used the multimeter to measure the voltages on the different pins. By looking at the PCB traces, I expected the thickest traces to match the power lines. The highest voltage measured was 5V on one pin. The lowest was minus 3.0V. Most others were 3.0V but the pins with the 8 pull-up resistors measured slightly below 3.0 volts. By using my oscilloscope I saw a low frequency block wave on the minus 3 volts and the 5 volt pins. Looking at the PCB connections, I assumed the block wave pins to be the output of the onboard charge pump on the LCD. The GSENT 1.9 volt pin could be used to set the contrast. Most 3V pins showed spikes that seemed to match the activity on the LCD display when activated. I expect those pins to be digital data pins. Using a logical analyzer I could capture the digital signal on the 8 data pins for both using the insertion switch and for the logo displayed when using USB. By combining that information with the other pins it became clear which pins are the controlled lines. It also gave me insight in the initialization and the control data versus the bitmaps that were displayed. In this data capture you can recognize some of the text that is displayed on the LCD when the insertion switch is used. I then desoldered the display from the PCB. Using a desolder pump and lots of patience I managed to detach the display without damaging it. Although there are markings on the back of the display, I could not find any data sheets or other documentation. Further analysis and guesswork was required. I saw that a breadboard connector to the display to allow connecting each wire separately. Then I could test it to see if it still worked. By combining similar wires together, I could determine which pins were truly essential. The display didn't die by connecting it to a 3.3V Arduino Pro Mini. I used a shift register and my MX Unified I.O. library to have more pins available. After replaying the initialization commands, I was able to use the display without connecting it to the original device and I could change the pixels. This experiment confirmed that the LCD display reacted fine to signals that were much slower than the original device. Based on the Adafruit GFX driver for the Nokia 5110 display, I then made a new MX Unified I.O. LCD driver library. As you can see here, it wasn't quite perfect yet. After fixing some display specific behavior in the driver, the example program shows the splash screen followed by various drawing primitives such as rectangles, circles and triangles and then it displays text and the final Adafruit logo animation. As you can see I now can use this LCD display in my own projects. It should work fine on 3.3V Arduinos as well as on an ESP8266 or an ESP32. In the description of this video you can find a link to the library in my GitHub account. There you can also find more technical information. I hope you liked this video. If you liked this video you can subscribe to be notified of future videos. Bye bye and tot ziens.